But this daring mystique came to a sobering end in a horrifying accident with disastrous consequences in 1955 at Le Mans. In 1955, I was driving for Mercedes-Benz and I was teamed with Fangio. And uh, Pierre Levesque, of course, was in, in one of the Mercedes as an invitation drive because he'd done so well the year before. Pierre Levesque driving uh, a Mercedes um, crashed up and over the tail of an Austin Healey driven by Lance Macklin and the Mercedes impacted on top of the bank in front of a spectator enclosure and broke up. And the front suspension and engine of the Mercedes was thrown through the crowd like a torpedo. And the Mercedes hurled itself like a thunderbolt into an enclosure packed with spectators. It was a tragedy because so many people who were just there to see a race I mean, a driver accepts the, accepts the dangers, but for it to go and, and be the public or a marshal or something, that, that is fairly unacceptable. What was a terrible freak accident produced such a devastating death toll that it very nearly ended motorsport. The grim record that will be remembered from this race at Le Mans is of some 80 dead and more than 100 injured. Across the world, races were cancelled, and many countries, including Switzerland, have banned racing to this day. But even after this tragedy, the authorities were incapable of improving safety for the drivers. People generally look over their shoulder and see things through rose-coloured glasses, and they were the good old days. If you raced as a Formula One Grand Prix driver for a period of five years, the batting average was that there was a two out of three chance you were going to die. So they were bad years. It would take yet another big name to crash to improve safety. But Jackie Stewart's horrific experience at the 1966 Belgian Grand Prix proved that the aftermath was just as deadly as the impact. Jackie Stewart smashed broadside into the stone abutment of a barn that was there. And that bent the car in two, crushed in the top of the cockpit until the cockpit opening was only 10 inches wide. It twisted Jackie's pelvis round so that he was lying effectively on his side in the cockpit. And I was trapped for some 20 odd minutes in the car, semi-conscious, coming and going in and out of consciousness. Um, with the electrics not being able to be switched off and me not being able to get out the car. And... The fuel tanks burst and the cockpit then filled up with fuel because he was on full tanks and there was nowhere for the fuel to go. And it began to top up the cockpit. So he effectively he was laying strapped and trapped in a bath of petrol. I was taken eventually when they found an ambulance to a, what they called a medical centre, which was just concrete floor. And looking around, you told me that the first thing that struck him was that there were all these stubbed out cigarette butts on the floor around him. This was an eerily sobering experience for Stuart, in which he realised that it was imprudence, not bravery, that sent drivers to their deaths. Everybody knew the sport was dangerous. It wasn't as if suddenly we found that tiddlywinks was dangerous if you broke your nail and you get uh, some terrible infection underneath your nail. I mean, this was something that we knew we were losing lives on and we knew that cars crashed and we knew that we were sometimes catching fire. We knew all of those things, but there were no adequate protection or amenities to either suffocate fires quickly enough or get drivers out of cars or get them to hospitals quickly. <laughs>